Hello, welcome to Advent Devotions 2021. My name is Lynn Gordon. I am lay minister here at Rocky River United Methodist Church and Trinity United Methodist, part of Twice Blessed Free Store. And this year's devotion series will be on chosen people. It certainly seems fitting that we use Mary as our first person who is so highly favored among so many people. So today we think about people who were chosen by God and we're expecting them to be brilliant people, someone like Charles or John Wesley, when in reality it was ordinary people used by our extraordinary God. Mary was a lowly person and she was raised in a city called Nazareth. She was poverty stricken and a young, scared teenager. She was just an ordinary girl used by our extraordinary God to bring in the savior of the world. Let's look at part of the familiar scripture in chapter one of the gospel of Luke. God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant from King David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings come to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was puzzled by the words, and the angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will call him Jesus. Mary asks, how can this be since I am a virgin? Gabriel replies, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child. She has been barren in her old age and has conceived a child and is already in her sixth month. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. In other words, the Beatles song was playing in the background, Let It Be. Mary says, let it be? Can you imagine? Being so willing to allow God to use you that you drop every sing, single thing in your life of what's going on to fulfill the number one goal from God that has been planned from the beginning of time that would ultimately change the world forever? Again, we go back to an ordinary girl. Aren't we all ordinaries? Just people trying to find our way on the journey called life? What else do we know about Mary? She was most likely in the seventh or eighth grade and immature. Her father was Joachim, and he had arranged a marriage from Joseph. Their engagement, they would court each other, and they would start to build a relationship. So in the meanwhile, Mary is getting ready. She's getting ready for a wedding. She's preparing clothes. She's sewing cloths. She's making towels. She's getting a dowry completely ready. And surprise, Mary's in the middle of an ordinary day when Ga Gabriel shows up and says, Hail, favored one of Israel, the Lord is with you. He then tells her not to be afraid. And just as the angel was telling Mary not to be afraid, it's a word for you and me. In the Bible, it appears 365 times, do not fear one for every daily worry and concern. This is some good news that he's sharing with all of us. Don't fear about our future. The second line, God will be with you. You have found favor with the Lord. He uses the name Mary, but what if we substitute our own names? Lynn, Grace, Barb, David, John, you have found favor and been chosen by God. 
Each of us has been personally picked. Everywhere we go, God goes with us. And it's good news for all of us. He's already in tomorrow or any concern, any joy, and any problem. Mary replies, how can this be so since I am a virgin? Don't we question God about anything and everything? Yet God has already planned ahead to the next problem that we're trying to rationalize. Then the angel tells her that the power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow her. The same word was used in Genesis in the creation story. Genesis 1 verse 1. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters from the beginning of time and created life in those waters the same way that the Holy Spirit hovered over Mary and overshadowed her, creating life within her. Both are miracles. And miraculously, the Spirit created life over in the waters, in creation, and created life in Mary. By now, Mary was shocked and overwhelmed, but Gabriel wasn't done. For with God, nothing is impossible. If God did it in creation and in her Aunt Elizabeth, who was old and barren, God can make possibilities out of the impossible. And that's the same for all of us. Gabriel left and Mary says, Lord, I am your handmaid and your servant. And there it goes again, let it be. Just as the Beatles sang, she says, let it be according to your word. Do with my life and body what you want. She believed. Martin Luther said, nothing could be more, more miraculous than the virgin birth, except the fact that Mary believed. The angel left her and her mind was racing and her feelings must have been fear, excitement, anticipation, incomprehension. She couldn't even imagine. Then some of the thoughts of what people might think of her or gossip about, or how would they treat her? And what about Joseph? What would he say or do? Mary then travels to see her Aunt Elizabeth, who by the way is in her late 80s and is pregnant with John the Baptist. She greets Mary and calls her blessed. And Mary is so filled with the love of the Lord that she explodes in a song of happiness, which we know as the Magnificat. My soul praises the Lord, for God is my salvation. I'm so filled with joy that he is my savior. This is the essential story of the Annunciation of Mary with the visit from angel Gabriel. Mary is the only human to have ever been with Jesus throughout his entire earthly life, from the moment of conception all the way through his death. She loved him as she was birthing him and remembers every detail about delivering her child on a bed of hay in a cold and dirty stable filled with the smell of animals placing the holiest of holies in a manger that was used to feed animals. She bathed him, fed him, cuddled him, scolded him. And as the scriptures tell us, pondered all these things in her heart, wondering what each moment in his life meant. From the moment she gave birth all the way to the foot of the cross, when that same man who was once a baby die for our sins. She watched as the drops of blood poured from him drop by drop on the ground for the sins of others and mourned for the loss of her baby boy. It can be said that God chose a humble person to use as his instrument to accomplish his works in the world. Mary was not from a noble class of people, yet she delivered the king of kings and the Lord of Lords, her station of life was a commoner and she was known as a servant girl. God chose Mary, low and humble, 
to accomplish his grand purpose. Mary had the audacity to believe that God had chosen her to be the mother of the Messiah. Mary didn't say like Moses, well, I'm not good enough, I can't speak well enough, get somebody else. Mary simply believed. And our mighty God has chosen you and me, commoners. Why are you watching this video today? Because God has chosen you. He has a mission for you that only you personally can fulfill. He didn't choose you because of your abilities. He chose your life for a purpose, his purpose. This Advent season, you have the chance to give glory to the King of Kings, the King of the universe, flesh incarnate. Are we all able to say, here, I, here am I, Lord, send me, just as Isaiah? I don't need the details, Lord. Let me have the faith that Mary did. Whatever the encounters, I'm available. I know you have chosen me. God has chosen you and me to be an instrument to carry Jesus into the world this Advent. Could we be that loving presence of Jesus? Maybe the only Jesus somebody will ever see? You and I are chosen people. When I became a lay minister, last year my scripture verse was Luke 1.38. I am the Lord's servant. He has picked me for the purpose of empowering you to figure out how to touch lives this Christmas. How is God calling you this Advent season? In your ordinary days, lean into our extraordinary God to challenge you and to grow you to be the next person he needs to fill his simple and small purpose. Who knows, it could change the world as we know it today. Shall we end in prayer? Just as in Mary's song, may our souls glorify you, Father. You are always mindful of each of our needs and wants. We thank you for always providing to help us along our own life journeys. We thank you for the gift of Mary and her amazing dedication to all that was asked of her. May we be the vessels to be filled and poured out to help the next people you have placed along the way. In your holy name, amen. Thank you. See you next week.